Hello Jamers. So recently I've made a lot of videos talking about how to execute these very technical and even a little bit precise movement techniques, things like the King's Fall skips and things of that nature. And I was sitting here thinking to myself, well, I never really made it like a rudimentary kind of guide or approach or even kind of a teaching tool on how to do some of these techniques, even things from like shatter skate and well skate all the way to the basics, such as dash boosting and like swap canceling. So I figured, hey, why not do it? Initially, this was just going to be a video guide on how to do shatter and well skate. Uh, and then I don't know if I have like ADHD or something. Yeah, I went down the rabbit hole. So however long this video, it was probably supposed to be like 40 minutes shorter. Anyway, there'll be links for timestamps in the description if you want to jump to a specific part or something like that. I don't really recommend watching the whole video, but you can if you want. I hope you enjoy and send it to a friend if you think they suck at moving. To start off, I want to dive into two basic techniques that'll kind of get you a good idea as to what we're working with, and they can be used to build a foundation on other techniques later on. These are what I would suggest are like the cornerstones of understanding how to kind of get around the game quickly or just be optimal in your movement. So the first one that I'm going to cover is the Warlock Icarus Dash Boost, and it's actually quite simple. And the second one is the ceiling bouncing that most of you PvP players will actually be quite familiar with on Hunter, where you bonk your head on a ceiling to go faster. So to start off talking about the dash boosting, this is actually pretty simple. And in order to demonstrate to someone who's completely new for the sake of clarity as to what this does and what the benefit of this is, whenever you're moving around and you normally do an Icarus dash, you don't get a lot of speed off of it. It's more of like a, a evasive dodge kind of thing, right? You, maybe you would be shooting at a player or an enemy and it's like, oh no, big attack, and you could just dash around the corner really fast without having to do like a, you know, a tricky, you know, insta snap slide or whatever, right? So, whenever you're watching your YouTubers or streamers or even your friends, you may notice, well, how come my dash doesn't go as fast as theirs does? And you may do all kinds of weird inputs and, you know, tricks and stuff like that to try to get a little bit faster, and you could see that that one went a little bit quicker. Well... It may be a simple thing of you're just not doing the timing correctly, and it's actually quite a simple trick to do. So to start off, you're going to want to be on Burst Glide. This is very important because you get a burst of momentum whenever you jump. You can see you go a little bit further and you move faster. With that in mind, you need to be on Icarus Dash, obviously. And to do this, it's very simple. All you have to do is just burst. You use your Burst Glide like this in an Icarus Dash. And you want to do that in some quick succession, you'll notice that you get quite a nice uh, burst of speed. So you'll see I'll do it here. And you can see I got like a nice burst of speed that I could carry with a jump. You can also carry this out of the Icarus Dash into a glide in order to maintain your momentum. And chain it into jumps so that you can maintain that momentum even further. It's even better if you want to do it out of a jump because you get the initial jump momentum. And you can chain that with the Icarus Dash. The more optimal approach to this is you're supposed to hit the ground, do a burst, and then do a dash. And that's the simple dash boost. The next thing I want to talk about is the ceiling boost on Hunter. You could be on any Hunter for this, any element. However, it's pretty recommended that you have Stompies on for this because they give you a nice burst of jump. And as far as jump goes, you can use Strafe Jump or Triple Jump or even High Jump. Uh, I'm going to use Strafe Jump just for... The simple approach to this and so a ceiling boost is exactly what it sounds like when you jump you want to jump really close to the ceiling so you get boosted forward or even downwards right so when you do this uh, optimally you're gonna get like a nice chunk of momentum and i like to come to this like little lost sector here to demonstrate how it works uh, bonus points if you do it on a curve because you get two directions of uh, velocity which is a little bit more optimal as you can see and it's quite simple, really. You just bonk your head whenever you do a jump. Make sure that there's no obstruction above it, or else you can get blocked. And you just kind of move around quick. It like gives you a nice burst of momentum. It's nothing huge compared to what, uh, what you'll be using later on, but it is a nice thing that's worth mentioning. And it's a good technique to have in your repertoire because you're not always going to have sword ammo. You're not always going to be able to you know, abuse these super fast techniques or anything like that. I believe Walla did a really big video on this for PvP players, this specific technique and how to effectively apply it and stuff like that, so that could be worth looking at. But as you can see, you get a nice burst of momentum, and it's quite a simple technique, really. There's not really much to it. You could boil it down very simply to uh, bonk your head on the ceiling, and you go faster. That's pretty much it. 
All right, so now that I've covered some of the basics, I'm gonna get into some of the more what I would call intermediate stuff where it's a bit of a step up and you're kind of starting to build on to what you know. And I think that these are things that anyone could pick up with a few minutes of practice. Uh, not really anything crazy. There's no super crazy inputs you gotta do, no frame perfect stuff. It's just taking what you've learned from the video already and kind of applying it further so that you can further optimize your moving around ability. Waiting on from that, we're going to do something that I like to call swap canceling. Some people call it sword swap canceling. Some people just call it switch your sword so you can jump earlier. So to get an understanding of what this is, it's nothing complex, but I'm going to demonstrate it off the top here. So whenever you jump and slash your sword, you'll notice that there's like a delay before you can jump or before you can actually really do any kind of input at all, unless it's an override and input like a shattered eye or a super, right? So. You can see, if you look at the bottom left, you can see me trying to throw a grenade, right? And I have to wait till the sword animation finishes before I do anything else for the most part. Well, what if I told you that you could do this and also maintain a huge chunk of momentum from your eager edge slash if all you did was switch your weapons after slashing? And this is what this, this, is what this looks like. As you can see, I had zero downtime. Uh, the downtime I had was like during the swap timer. So, to show what this looks like when you don't do that, that's it. You know, that's kind of all you get. It's quite a bit slower. You don't move as fast. So again, when I go to the top of the stairs here, I'm going to slash my sword with Eager Edge after jumping. I'm going to do a double jump or maybe a glide or whatever I want to do. And that's it. As soon as I slash, I hit my switch button keybind or uh, input and I just jump again. And this will, it's called a cancel because you're canceling your delay that you normally have. And that's all there is to it. And this works on Titan, this works on Warlock, this works on Hunter. It's just as simple. So, continuing off of that previous clip, you'll see here that now there is, I'm on Warlock. I don't know where I was going with that. So we can use this previous statement and demonstrate it. As you can see, I carry a nice chunk of momentum almost losslessly. Now, what if I told you that you could combine this in the dash boost for a huge chunk of momentum without doing anything crazy? And this is what this looks like. As you can see, you get a nice chunk. Normally, the timing for that input, if you don't actually do the sword cancel or the swap cancel, is quite, it's quite unforgiving. As you can see, I barely got it there. I lost a lot of speed on that. However, when you do this, you can maintain all of that speed and still get a huge chunk off of the boost. And you can see that right there. And this is what I like to call uh, the, like the swap, swap cancel boost. There's no real name to it. You just kind of like, you know, oh, I'm just moving fast, bro. Like, that's just what it is, you know? And you can even continue this with uh, linear bunny hops and just keep jumping and, you know, maintain a huge segment of speed for a very extended portion of time just by doing these very simple inputs like this. And so if you ever tried to do this and you wondered like, oh, how come I'm not getting the same speed? That's why you didn't do a swap cancel. And a lot of streamers or content creators or whatever will do it really fast and they'll like switch back to the sword really quick. And so it looks like they just have their sword out the whole time. Uh, this is because you can actually switch weapons during the Icarus Dash animation. So you don't actually ever see them kind of do that thing. As you can see, it looks like I never put my sword away. It just looks like I Icarus Dashed. And I'll go and show it on Titan, just to demonstrate that it's actually very good on Titan. Alright, so to demonstrate this on Titan, like I said I would, uh, this is going to be on Catapult Lift for now. Normally I use Strafe, but Catapult Lift is also really good with this. You can see you get a huge burst of speed and a lot of distance with this. Uh, of course, Lion Rampants is uh, the most optimal approach to this because you can carry that momentum for like five years. I'll show that off real quick. And what I just did is a motion that you will see demonstrated later on in the video. Uh, quite soon, actually. And I'll take off Lion Rampants and I'll go to Strafe just to demonstrate it for you because strafe I feel like benefits the most from this because you get a lot of horizontal velocity where you go like forwards and backwards, right? 
and you can see you get a nice burst there and you just repeat that process infinitely as much as you want. Personally, I like catapult, but I also like strafe. So all these is ultimately up to what you feel like you want to use. And yeah, feel free to experiment and test it out uh, in case you just want to see it with high lift because high lift is actually used in uh, duo and trio for King's Fall at Sisters and Oryx. I'll show what that looks like. You can see it's not as useful as you may imagine because high lift is just more about getting, you know, up into the sky. So I don't really view it as a very useful jump, but I, at least you got to see it. And that's all there is to this cute little technique. And hey, since I'm on Titan right now, I figure why not show off what sword flying is. I know in the last few videos, people got a little upset that I didn't really show much love for Titan, and I felt like that the Titan techniques are a little bit of a no-brainer. But I, I realize that that's not necessarily true, and that there is an interest, and that there is a large market for Titan players. Um, and so with that, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the elusive sword flying technique. If you don't know what sword flying is, it is a method of being able to virtually infinitely gain height in uh, travel distances without ever falling on Titan. And you need Lion Rampants for this, if I recall correctly. And you also need to be on Catapult Lift, and you need a sword. It does not have to be an Eager Edge sword. It does not have to be the other half. It can be any sword that gives you Slash. So the way that this works is Lion Rampant buffs your jump, and it does a whole bunch of other stuff that makes you look goofy and silly and all that fun stuff. Slashing your sword has some weird effect. I'm not actually sure how this works. This is the one thing I don't really understand how it works very well. But it has some weird effect where it resets the timer or adds to your timer on your boost in Lion Rampant Jump. And we can combine these two things with a small gap time between the actions to infinitely gain height and just keep soaring through the sky. And this can be used to skip the entire jump puzzle in King's Fall as well. And I didn't include it in that video because I just felt like it was such a simple thing to talk about. Or simple thing to execute and did not need to be talked about. So to do this, and I'm not going to demonstrate how to eager sword fly yet. That'll be later. We'll have our sword out. We'll get a cute little jump. Slash. Wait. Jump. Slash. Wait. Right. And you just do this. And this is it. There are uh, input combos and timing and stuff like that that you can do to gain height and less like horizontal velocity. You can do things to maximize the distance you get with your sword ammo. Uh, there's all kinds of combinations that you can do. You can see this one's a little bit more factored towards height. There is a ceiling bound if you're wondering why I'm not gaining much height. That's pretty much it. This is a very, very simple technique in my opinion. If you want to be a first timer and you want to kind of play it safe, you should wait a little bit after your slash and your jumps like this. About a quarter second, half second wait. And you can see it's a little bit slower, but it's a lot safer. And that's the elusive sword flying. It's really quite simple, actually. Eventually, you'll be able to combine this with Eager Edge. And, you know, get, like, good horizontal velocity. The timing for that's a little goofy, and I have to practice it myself, but now you know. All right, so one final note I want to mention before we go on to the advanced techniques is something that I call empty edge or like dry skate or dry empty, whatever you want to call it. So what that means is, oh no, you've skated around so much and now you're all out of eager edge sword ammo. What do you do? Oh, you can't do any fancy techniques. Well, yeah, you can because uh, I don't know if this is just bungee jank or if this is deliberate or a, I'm pretty sure it's just like a a benefit of the sword being empty and the perks still being active even when there's no ammo. 
uh, which this will probably get changed in the future, but it works now, is when I pull up my empty sword hilt, you can see I still have Eager Edge, and I still get quite a lunge, uh, quite a notable lunge, compared to when I don't have ammo, it's like pretty limp dick. So with that in mind, we can still abuse this by simply doing the exact same thing and getting a huge burst of momentum whenever we uh, have our Eager Edge. So it's not a ton, but it's still a little bit, and it's still worth using versus whenever I don't have Eager Edge, and I'll just do this, you can see it's a uh, pretty, pretty unsatisfactory. Again, I'll demonstrate Eager Edge. As you can see, it's still like quite a nice uh, chunk of distance. So there's probably going to be a lot of detractors who are suggesting, oh, well, you would never use these techniques in something like a raid and, or, a, you know, or a strike or a grand master. And, well, that's not necessarily true at all. And to kind of counterpoint those detractors, it's funny enough that I did a vow of the disciple last night in an LFG team that I don't know. And I thought that no one was talking in voice chat. It turns out that I was just an idiot. And my sound settings were messed up, but we're not going to talk about that. And so in that process, I virtually soloed Acquisition, which is the first encounter of Val the Disciple, using these techniques on a Warlock. And I'll just throw some clips on there, and if you want to, maybe I'll throw it on listed in the description if you want to see like that whole run, that whole encounter, uh, I can demonstrate that as well. I do pretty much every single thing that I talked about in this section in excess. So you can really see how you can abuse it, where you could apply it, and things of that nature. Someone's like, who fucking started? Who started the encounter? Oh my gosh, you MC Sloppy Joe. I won't let you down, bro. Oh, you got a brain? Love garden. I don't know. What's love? Let's see if we can find garden on this. No. Possibly this. All right. So now that we've covered both the basic and intermediate, we can get into the more advanced techniques where you start to really apply these things and really break the game. Because why not? First off, I'm going to talk about Eager Edge and just kind of go into that and define a few terms so that things are on a more common speaking ground. And then I'll go into how to actually use these techniques and where they're good to use and inputs and stuff like that. So Eager Edge is a sword perk that can roll on the other half and whatever the blue sword is from Theirs of Eternity. You can also craft an enhanced version on the other half when you unlock the pattern and the blue one. I still don't know what it's called. And what it does is it is a sword perk that gives you a huge boost to your lunge distance. Lunging is whenever you get a forward momentum towards a target or towards something with your sword. So you have to switch to it and slash. And this is a reference to the Halo 2 sword lunge if you're maybe out of the loop or you're 13 years old or something. And this is what we are going to found a basis of what I call eager edge techniques off of. This perk is the most important thing in the game for things like well skate and shatter skate and all kinds of cool stuff that involves you moving really fast for the most part. There's like out of bounds slides that you can do. I'm not going to get into all of that, but yeah, that's pretty much it for Eager Edge. Now I'm going to go and define a few things here. What is shatter skate? What is well skate? And what the fuck does skate mean in general? Skate in general is kind of in reference to uh, bunny hopping or ice skating or uh, or ground skating and stuff like that the phrase skate came from like ice skate in like quake which was you know kind of transformed to bunny hopping which became more of a more of a general term for bunny hopping speed skating and ice skating were two very old terms that initially were used however i'm not sure how they made their way to destiny in the context of Destiny, in Destiny 1, there was a technique known as Titan Skating, amongst other things. That was the more popular approach, where you could do a series of jumps over and over and over again at a specific timing, although most people spammed it with Twilight Garrison. 
to maintain momentum and even gain momentum and hit choke points faster and things of that nature. There were routes to this that you could follow and is more commonly done in trials, but the speedrunners got their hands on it and absolutely broke the game with it. Twilight Garrison was an exotic chess piece on Titan that you could use that was literally just Icarus Dash, but on Titan. So I guess somehow the phrase Titan skating became the name, and so everyone has just kind of gone with skating if it's a technique that gives you speed or something like that. That's my understanding of it. Uh, I don't really want to teach Destiny history class, so I'm kind of done with this topic now. All right, now I'm going to get into the granddaddy of techniques, the one that everyone wants to know, how to do the skate techniques. Uh, so it's really easy, you know, it's not something hard that you have to do. You just kind of, you know, do some inputs and that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. All right, all jokes aside, you have to understand what causes what to happen. You don't actually. Uh, you can macro this. I strongly am against macros, as we all know this now on my channel, but... It is a series of inputs where you are going to pull out your sword for Eager Edge. You're going to heavy attack to get the massive lunge and you're going to jump and use your super button. So this sounds counterintuitive, but for the technical explanation, <clears throat> my understanding of this is that it is an exploit of the Destiny 2's input buffer system. So again, it's going to be sword, heavy attack, which is right click or right trigger for most people. You're going to jump very soon and after that jump almost a couple frames it doesn't matter you can be zero to two frames or whatever you want it's got to be a very fast input where you just super immediately after you jump the timing is very forgiving and this is a very 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 easy trick to do the well skate is harder in my opinion and i think you have less active frames to actually use the super but that's whatever i'm gonna go on hunter and demonstrate it and so I want to point out I'm not macroing none of this is macroed I don't macro it is just that easy of an input once you've done it for a couple hours you can do it wherever you want it's important to note that it needs to be done off of a ledge unless you're doing a ground skate so if you pay attention I'm always doing it off of a ledge or a staircase a staircase is a ledge but if you're on the staircase it can be a little tricky and your timing is a little bit tighter where it needs to be done sooner because staircases can also act as a slope of some sort, like a smooth slope, and your character could lunge down the slope instead of over it. Like this, I lunged over the slope, right? Or if I do it like kind of here, it might lunge me downwards, and it would like just treat it as a straight line instead of going off a cliff. With all the technical explanations out of the way, I'm done explaining how Whale Skate works. I'll go into Hunter and Shatter Skate. Alright, so we're back on Hunter. The hunter technique is the exact same inputs, however I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving. There's no evidence suggesting this though. The added benefit of the shatter skate, and I should point out that it's called shatter skate because you require the shatter dive aspect and you need to use it, is that it gets a cool little effect and you don't have to worry about your super. So when you land, you get a cute little shatter dive animation, as you can see. Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool, right? Nothing too crazy going on there. That's, uh, that's kind of all there is to that. There's a lot of other cool stuff you can do with, uh, with shatter skates and all kinds of stuff like that. That is a little less forgiving to do on well skate, but I've covered that in the ground skate video, and I don't really feel like repeating myself 400 times. Uh, especially since ground skate is an extremely tech like technical input that you need to do, and it's very, like, very precise, and most people are just going to opt to macro it. But if you're wondering what it is, that's what a ground skate looks like. And again, I'm recording all this live. I don't macro or anything like that because that's cringe and lame. Uh, I like to actually play the game. I don't want the game to play for me. So yeah, that's my stance on that. And again, when you get good at it, you can start to chain these things together for some insane, insane, insane like area traversal. And that's kind of it. I'm going to talk about damage canceling. Damage canceling is an important concept in... Shatter skate and well skating, and I just call it eager skating as an umbrella term, because it enables a player to maybe slam into objects and not take damage or not die entirely. And this is also useful for if you're just Icarus dashing. Sometimes you get a lot of speed out of one and you slam into a wall and you die and you're like, oh man. Well, let's talk about what a damage cancel is. You may have heard me mention that a physics interrupting or like a, a physics blocking action what that looks like, or a physics override, is anything that, like, 
immediately interrupts what you're doing. So this could be like a shatter dive, it can be a super, it can be a sword slash, it can be a melee lunge. Anything that overrides the player's active physics. So what is active physics for those of you who are maybe, I don't know, maybe not all there in the brain? Or you're just, I don't know, you just don't understand. Whenever you get like launched somewhere, right? This is like active physics, right? I'm moving in a direction, I have a velocity in an area towards the wall. Well, I can interrupt that by swinging my sword and it'll like slow me down or it'll stop it or just completely override what that velocity was. Similarly, I can shatter dive, which is why whenever you see people shatter skate, you'll be like, oh no, he's gonna hit that wall, right? You can shatter dive right before you hit the wall or the floor and you see I took no damage. Whereas when I landed here before, I took like 75% of my health and damage. So, a good example of this is, I'm gonna shatter dive straight towards this little column here. I need to kill these guys so that I don't get like a 270 lunge. And you're gonna see that I splatter right into the wall. I perish right there on the spot. You may be wondering, oh man, that means I can't use that technique there. That sucks. This, this sucks. I don't like this. I'm going to Reddit to complain. Well, you don't need to go to Reddit to complain. Here's what you can do. You can simply just shatter dive the wall. As you can see, I overrode my physics. And to show this in the other dimension, where you use a sword slash instead, it has the downside of using sword ammo, but you can also do it on warlock, so that's a benefit, right? And I'll be here, whack the wall, and therefore, I don't die. And so that's what a damage cancel is. As far as other techniques for damage canceling, uh, this is going to get a little bit more technical, but if you are on, I believe if it's you're on Will of Radiance and a couple other things, and you use your charged melee ability with no melee charges, so I'll throw my shurikens here, and no super, you will interrupt that. I am not sure why that happens. I'm not sure if it works on Hunter, so I'm going to find out right now. It does not. So if you use your charged melee, so if you're on Warlock and you have Celestial Fire, you gotta use your Celestial Fire and you don't have Well of Radiance, you can damage cancel a wall by using your charged melee. So it'll just look like a normal melee, it'll make the sound, but it will like whack the wall and you'll just take no damage. This is quite a recent discovery and we're not really sure why it works, but yeah. Another example of a physics override to damage cancel is using your super. Like that. And that wasn't even like a perfect one. I still slammed into the wall, uh, but my super was able to keep me alive there. And so that's kind of the basics for the eager skate techniques. I won't go too heavily into ground skating, but I have a whole video on ground skating and lament topping, which is a whole other thing, but they're executed very similarly. So I just wanted to give an example of using all of these techniques all combined together and just like a little area traversal. There's nothing crazy going on here. I'm not macroing. Um, everything is being done in real time. Not right now, but I recorded this before I started recording the actual VO for the video. But I wanted to kind of get a little compilation so that I could just demonstrate like what all this stuff looks like when you bring it together. Here in a second, you see me pause and put my uh, jump to scroll wheel for the ground skate, which ground skate is something that I widely consider to be not very doable on controller. But we're not going to talk about that because this is uh, this is for both platforms. So you're going to see me do a lot of ground skates here and things of that nature. And this is just me combining all the tech together. A lot of shatter skates, a lot of ground skates, a lot of damage canceling, a lot of uh, uh, like sword, you know, like sword swapping and stuff like that, swap canceling, all kinds of cool, neat little tricks here for uh, the whole family. So I wanted to talk about in a more technical, like speculative form. What actually makes Shatter Dive and Well Skate work? So I want to preface this by saying this is so incomprehensibly speculative, there is zero evidence suggesting other than anecdotal evidence, which is based on other things that aren't necessarily true either, or like aren't necessarily labeled as fact. So, I talked about abusing the input buffer and that's why these tricks work. So the way that I believe it works is Whenever you do a shatter skate or a well skate, and then you do your jump, that jump input is buffered. However, when you use the super, it interrupts that buffer 
and it interrupts the animation, causing the animation to stall or hang or whatever, causing you to generate a ton of speed or velocity in a certain direction. And it cancels both the super and the jump since they kind of buffer each other out. And this is what causes that to work. This is again, extremely, extremely speculative with no evidence at all. And it would also make sense as to how the ground skate works. That's about all I have for that. So hopefully this little guide helped out, taught some stuff, and hopefully I see some new Titans and Warlocks and Hunters on the face of Thrasher magazine at some point in the uh, coming months. Beyond that, I don't really have anything conclusive to say besides uh, it may be frustrating to learn and figure out, but all I can recommend is just keep practicing and think about the inputs you're doing, make sure you're doing them right. These are all possible on controller, they're all possible on mouse and keyboard. You can do it on Stadia, you can do, well I mean, not, not in a little bit because it's going to go down, but yeah, it's all possible on every input method, so it's just a matter of practice and not complaining about things, right? If you like you need to macro it, that's a John and you're Johnning. And obviously, as usual, creative exercise and application of these will take it far, far further than anyone has ever taken it. And you know, it's a fun little way to play the game. Cool little tricks and things and stuff to do. Beyond that, I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, I don't know, send it to a friend or something if you think it was a good video and they suck balls at moving. Beyond that, I don't, I don't have anything else to say. Bye.